What are you supposed to say? Oh, welcome to at welcome Marriage to Marriage Minutes at its pace, and today we're going to be discussing the COVID crisis, the COVID crisis, Omicron, Delta, and Alpha, but more so just COVID in general, and checking in to see where everybody is. What? <laughs> checking <laughs> in to see how everybody's doing. Um, we have been hit with COVID and it's been stressful. And so uh, it's just, uh, it's crazy. And so we wanna make sure that you guys are fine, uh, that you're getting on, getting on, that you're ready to be great in 28 and that you're willing and ready to, to shake all this off your back and let's get at it. Cause life waits for no man or woman. Okay, so the COVID police contracted <laughs> COVID. So don't know. I mean, mm. I, yeah, I'll, 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 maybe someone will share where I contracted it. But uh, the point in the fact of the matter is, firstly, it is such a devastating blow to, at least to me, because honestly, I, throughout this whole pandemic, I feel like I have tried to do everything that I could to protect myself and to protect my family. And it still wasn't good enough. I mean, I've been vaccinated. I've been boosted. All those things. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I had a little bubble and my bubble's been breached. And it's just, it was, it was so devastating. And you felt like you had a scarlet letter on your chest because now you are one of the nasty people that call, call, that's how you feel. That's how I felt. And it was just such a um, depressing type of feeling. And let me say this, I did not experience COVID in the way that many people have. And so I'm not trying to minimize anybody's experience. My symptoms were very mild. And in fact, had I not tested, I would have been like many people saying, oh, I just have a side infection. Oh, I just have a cold. And, um, you know, it, so I'm grateful on one hand that my symptoms were very mild, but it really was scary to me because it's like, well, dang, if I'm doing everything I can and I still contracted COVID, is there any hope for us as a country and as a nation? So I know I can look at this many ways. I know that I wasn't very sick and maybe my booster and all of that prevented me from being very sick. Regardless, I'm grateful. My family is well, I'm well. I live in a, in a home and an environment where I could be well, well taken care of while I was isolated. <laughs> and my husband and my daughter were really good to me for those couple of days that I was ill. It was just a couple? It was, well, I mean, I was quarantined for 10 days, but oh, yeah. I mean, I really was only sick for about three days. And I don't need to tell you all that to, because I want sympathy or empathy or any of that, but I, I guess for me, it's kind of like, well, if that could happen to me, then yeah, it can happen to anybody. And I think about people who don't have the support that I have and don't have the ability to do what I did. And so it, it, it really just uh, softened my heart even more because I just know so many people are still suffering from this mess. And is there a way out? Yeah, and I think the challenges are that we do suffer uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, if we do contract it. And and I know that COVID fatigue is a, is a word that's out there, but I think it's real. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's exhausting. And, and I'll say this, I think the disheartening thing or thing that had me most frustrated is that the messaging and the protocols and the guidelines are all over the place. And so uh, when, when we found out that Rhonda was positive, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I got to shut it down for 14 days, you know, and I, and I notified my employer, my boss, and I let them know that I possibly had a close contact. And not possibly you had a, close yeah, that I, had, <laughs> that I had a close contact. And he was like, uh, okay, there's nothing in place. There was no protocols in place uh, for my company to follow uh, or there's no even CDC guidelines. You know, I thought it was a 10 day, 14 day quarantine, but it's not. You know, and so I, I tested negative uh, and that's a whole different topic of how you test and when you test and if you test on the high end or the bottom end. Uh, but I tested negative and my boss was like, all right, I see you Monday, you know, and it was just like, wow, you know, but 
but it is what it is. And so I, I know for us, it was a challenge and it was frustrating. And we had her in the upper room. When Jesus. Anyway, and so, um, you know, I, as a family, we came together and we did what we had to do. And I think it is challenging when you may not have the support uh, to get you through. Uh, I became the chef. I became, uh, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Uh, but I think I say all that to say is that um, you have to know in your heart of hearts what the truth is for you in regards to COVID and what you need to do. Uh, I used to wear a cloth mask and when they say Omicron was very transmissible and the cloth wasn't really doing much, you know, I had to go to KF94s and, you know, mask mandates and all that. It's just crazy. And it's exhausting for me because companies and people want to operate as business as normal and this is not normal. Uh, and it's January and people are tired of cold and people want to be out and people were buying tests like it was nobody's business um, because everybody wanted to have a, a negative test to go to holiday parties or go to family. I mean, I worked in downtown North, North Loop, West Loop area and in every Chicago. in Chicago, <laughs> right. <laughs> every drugstore downtown was out of the antigen tests. Uh, and they were going, stores were going like 300 tests. I mean, people were like crazy. And it's funny because before the holidays got here, there was test galore. And so it's just, you know. I didn't mean it. You have okay. to protect yourself and it's exhausting. And I know to even talk about it, it's like, oh God, you guys got to talk about that again. But do what you have to do for your family, protect your family. Um, you have to protect yourself. And so if that means, you know, you get boosted and get shots, then do what you have to do. It's, this is not the format or the forum to discuss right or wrong in regards to that. Uh, I am not the person to judge anybody and the decisions that they make. I love you no matter what. And so just be healthy and be wise. And I think that it is important to try to be educated, but just like Mark alluded to, there's so much mixed information about testing, when to test, when not to test, and when to get boosted, when to not. It's, there's so much confusion out there. And there's so many things that tell you, okay, even taking a test, okay, I'm self-safe today, but am I safe tomorrow? I like, there's nothing that's foolproof. That's nothing that you can say or do that 100% protects you and your family. And I think the rules are different and changing because honestly, from the top up, we've been changing. You know, I think it's important to say your company allowed that for you because you were boosted and vaccinated, right? And so they gave you yeah. this. So, but I contracted COVID being boosted and vaccinated. So there's so much craziness out there. And I think this is what I wanna say at the end of the day. We don't have your answers. We don't know what's best for you. But what we do know is that as a family for us, any cold, sniffle, or anything, we are treating it as if it's COVID, firstly. And then lastly, we are praying about everything, praying how to move, praying how to stand, praying when to test, praying when not to test, when to get vaccinated, when to get, we got, that's all we have. We can do the best, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And I think if nothing else, through it all, you can't lose faith. And so if your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, Ooh. then you have to maintain that, even though it may get very weak, it may waver. You just have to know, to know, to know that God has not failed us. He has not forsaken us and he has not left us. And so it's up to us to stay close to him as we navigate these trying times. I should say that I've been out of quarantine for several weeks now. <laughs> and I'm doing what I can do. And I thank the Lord that I'm fine. And then my family's fine. Go ahead. I'm finished. With and we're trying to finish this up. But I think the other thing is too, is our daughter is very active. And so we're trying to model of how to navigate this for her, as well as steward over her emotions and everything that she's deal with as a teenager in these trying times. Yes. Very challenging. Uh, we restrict a lot of movement outside of school and uh, her swim team. 
Uh, but it's difficult and it's difficult to come down on her sometimes for being just that, a teenager, but her health is important. And as she navigated it through her sickness uh, of what we thought was COVID and she tested negative, it's, it's just scary, you know? And I think the frustrating thing for me was I was waiting for that 12 to 15 vaccination to drop and they just kept playing with it, you know? And, and we finally got it and got her boosted, but, you know, she was at the tail end of her vaccination and, and ready for the boost. Yeah. And so that's, you know, she seems like she's the host because. <laughs> Don't do that to her. <laughs> no, I'm being silly. But um, however it happened, it happened. We learned from it. And so we have put in place uh, systems to help us navigate it in the future. So you guys do what you got to do. Take care of your households, take care of each other, love each other. Cause it's really and truly at the end of the day, Family is all we got. And so we got to do what we can. Be well and be blessed.